everyone, Lauren from Wildflowers here. Today I'm filming from Los Angeles. And I have this really cool room with all these windows and it's really exciting. But anyway, um, I wanted to show you how to do this really cool elephant nail using the Rainbow Pigment Stacker and the Wildflowers Liquid Brush. So I hope you get to try it. It's definitely a tricky one. Enjoy. Here is the finished look. The first thing that you'll need is the Wildflowers Liquid Brush. We have a couple generations of liquid brushes. This is a newer one. So it has a chamber that you can fill with alcohol or water. In this case, I filled it with isopropyl alcohol. And the isopropyl alcohol actually comes out um, into the tip of the brush. So I've taken some white tissue paper. I've placed it under my Wildflowers Art Mat. This way I can see the colors that I'm creating here. You want to squeeze out some isopropyl alcohol into a little puddle and take some of that pigment and sort of mash it in there and it's going to create like a liquidified version of the pigment and it's going to dry. So I'm using the green, the blue, the purple, and the black for this. Then I'm taking my client's nail or my nail tip, I'm coating it with a white gel polish that cures with a sticky layer. It's definitely helpful to have that cure with a sticky layer. And now you can see my little puddles are dry. I'm just adding some isopropyl alcohol, pressing my brush down and swooshing down the nail. I'm doing one in the middle, two on each side to kind of represent like where my ears are gonna pop up from. It's a very rough draft. What I'm really trying to do is just rough this in, lay down some color, because the way that this technique works is you put the color there and then you pull it away. So now with some just plain isopropyl alcohol on my brush, you'll see that I can take the very, very tip of my liquid brush and I can pull away color. And this is really the trick to, to creating this nail. You wanna apply the color and then you wanna use the alcohol in the tip of your brush to pull it away use downward strokes and you'll see right here what I'm doing right now is the elephant's face so I'm pulling downward strokes here's where the little tusks are gonna go and now we'll pull down the trunk and really if I wanted to just do a couple more details at this point like I could be done so you can spend as much or as little time working on this as you want um, I fool around with this for a really long time, playing with color, playing with stuff, because this is actually the second time I've done this technique. Um, so I'm playing with some shadowing, I'm playing with highlights, um, just kind of working it out, figuring out the next time I do it, what I'm going to do a little bit differently. I feel like I need to darken up my colors. So if I could rewind, go back and do this whole nail over again, I think those first few swipes that I did, I would have done a little bolder and I wouldn't have been scared to uh, really apply some color. So now I'm going back through and just applying some bold colors to this nail. So don't be afraid because you're gonna pull the color back off. So don't be afraid if you get some really bold streaks of color. You'll be able to blot it and pat it as you see me doing now to soften those colors up. It also helps uh, to draw an elephant's face so that you can really learn the anatomy of an elephant's head. You have to understand that before you just try to make it happen on a nail. So important to sketch it out a few times. They have um, like eye sockets, they've got little cheeks, they've got the tusks that kind of flare out. So understanding all of that, where those things go, how it works is very, very helpful. Um, and you know, you'll be able to impress your six-year-old niece because you'll be able to draw an elephant head after this. So, I mean, it's a win-win for everyone. Here comes my most favorite part, drawing the eyes. I'm going to take a very concentrated mixture of that black pigment and use the very, very tip of my liquid brush and just barely dab, almost like pointillism, where I'm just dabbing like a little tattoo gun, doop, 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 little tiny dots as I do this. And this is where everything suddenly comes to life. It's always my favorite part. If I'm hand painting a character or a person, it all just looks like colors and shapes and blobs until you put the eyes on and then suddenly the whole thing changes. 
So now I'm going through, uh, and, and you want to take the time to really deepen and darken places, uh, shadowy places to give the look of contrast. And I'm just working my way through putting that dark color into those places, knowing that if I cross over the line or whatever, like watch how right here I swipe back down and clean that all up. So I'm not afraid to accidentally come over with my color or paint over something because I know that all I have to do is take my brush and just pat a little bit and slide that brush around and you can actually remove color. So that's really nice. It's nice to work with a medium that is so forgiving. And in this case, these pigments are, are very forgiving because it's not like it's baked onto the nail. It's just pigment that we're moving around with alcohol. Now I'm adding some pops of color in here. So there's a little blue, some purples, um, again, a little shadowing. I'm not quite happy with my tusks. So I feel like I need to do tusk surgery because they look like big jumbo marshmallows and I just don't really like them. So what I'm gonna do is just basically put a blob of black pigment right over top of both of them. Because I know that if I do this and I come in with a clean brush, it will give me almost like a black outline going around my tusk. So I put a black blob down. Now I'm coming in with my brush and just cleaning that out. And what a difference this makes. It looks like you went in and actually hand painted some little tiny fine black line around those tusks when that's not the case at all. You can just utilize the alcohol and your brush um, to just kind of clean that shape back out and suddenly you have a beautiful tusks. Same thing with our eyes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit up these eyelids on our elephant here, clean that up a little bit, add a little shadow, just some little tiny details here and there. And now I'm not terribly happy with uh, the coloration on this guy, so I'm gonna just start like messing with color all over the place. Like here I go, wee, I'm gonna put this one, put that one, don't like it, scrape it off, put this one, try that one. Uh, at the very end, I finally get a good stroke that I'm really happy with to make the elephant's uh, front leg. So you'll see, I'm accidentally painting over my trunk. I'm like, whatever, I clean it back out, cleaning up my sides. And now finally, I will make my last stroke. Um, and it's gonna be kind of dark that uh, creates that elephant's leg. And then I'm finally um, happy with the coloration going in again, cleaning up my trunk, making sure everything's just the way I want it. And I love this little elephant. Definitely a tough one. Give yourself time to fool around. Don't try it right on your client unless you're a total crazy person. I would definitely try this on a nail tip first. And finally, here's the leg that I like. Just comparing right there, finally done. Here it is. I'm going to top it with the Wildflowers Metallic Top Coat. Cure it for 30 seconds. And that's it. Tag me if you try it. I can't wait to see you guys try this. If you need any of the products that I use to create this look, head over to wildflowersnails.com. We have eight completely hands-on nail art classes that we are taking across the country for nail professionals in 2018. And I hope that you'll join us as part of the Master Artist Series. You can sign up for our classes at wildflowersnails.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.